guys. Um, okay, so I made it made a video about this this morning, but I feel like there was stuff that I left out. So I deleted it, and I'm going to remake it right now. So I had an interesting night last night. Um, I was uh, speaking, well, the Lord was speaking through me to, through a, with a messenger angel. And I just say it's the Lord. But um, uh, I had heard earlier before I started to go to sleep. Where is it? In my little study book, because I get this um, uh, soft cover study book in the mail. And right in the notes section on the opposite side of the last place I wrote, on a different lesson in the book, I wrote Telecand, T-E-L-E-C-A-N-D. This is what I heard um, when I was awake. Uh, this is where Chris gets Christmas stuff. I put a dash, Telecan dash. This is where Chris gets Christmas stuff. And so immediately I just leaned over because I keep my, my notepad and stuff. And um, the TV was still on, so I was able to see, kind of see a little bit what I was doing. But, um... I looked up the word telecand, and uh, let's see. Did I, oh, I X'd off all of it. Okay, so tele means, um, let's see. Let's try this. This is something I came up on, but. Um, meaning of tele. Should have been more prepared, you guys. Um, let's see. It means like far away, uh, end goal, result, consummation, perfection, literally completion of a cycle. Uh, far, far off. That's what tele means. And canned, uh, meaning of canned, C A N D. It means uh, it's a noun. Let's see, a word that is modified, qualified by another. Okay, hold on. It means. Um, Whiteness, brightness, uh, white, bright. There was another one, I, uh, unaccountable. Uh, a unit of luminous intensity defined as a fraction of the luminous intensity of a group. Um, So, yeah, that's what that meant. So, um, this is where Chris, telecanned, this is where Chris gets Christmas stuff. Eh. <laughs> so, there was that. And then, um, so then, as I fell asleep, I kept having more dreams through the night. And so, it's hard to explain. I'm going to try to do the best of my ability, but... Um, there was an angel there and he, we were standing, the Bible was like just floating in midair. It was like a bigger Bible and he was just using it to turn the pages and he would turn a few pages and then he would say something about it and the scriptures would pop out on the pages. And to me, I perceived, I can't remember what he was saying, everything guys, but, um, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, he was like saying, like prophesying, like these prophecies are going to come to pass and stuff. But he started out by saying the tribulation is about to start. Those that are watching. And then it trailed off. It trailed off like I couldn't hear. 
And a lot of things, like, I seen it and I heard it, but it was, I could hear what he was saying, but it was just to take in, I believe. But some of it, I was like, oh, I was just, most of it, I was just in awe. Because sometimes as he was saying, uh, as he was saying things, I looked up over the Bible, it was like a sky, and I seen, like, meteorites, like, bursting through the skies, and, um... Um, gee, what else? He, uh, some of them I was like, oh, like he was telling me what was going to happen. I just can't remember guys, but you know, just let the Lord speak to you personally and, um, ask him and pray about it because I really feel like it meant like the ones that are watching and waiting, they're, they're not going to know exactly the date or the time or the hour or whatever, but they're just, when the Lord's getting ready to come and swoop them up, they're going to be ready, you know. <coughs> they're watching. They're waiting. We're children of the light, you know. We're not children of the darkness, so we're not walking around in the dark. We're watching and waiting. So uh, I think that's what that meant. But, um... So also he, also I was able to see one of the pages in the book and it was Isaiah, the, the book of Isaiah and the book of Timothy. I think it was all the books, one book. I don't know. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm getting sick. <coughs> oh my goodness. My lungs are itchy. My ears are itchy. My sinuses are itchy. Um, okay. So anyway. So, um, there was some stuff I wanted to, um, okay. And the, then I wrote it in my little journal thing. The second part of it, the tribulation is about to start. Um, it's second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So that was, um, yeah, just random pages because I was in the dark. I couldn't really see what I was writing. And then um, <clears throat> on my little study thing here, I wanted to share this with you guys where I wrote Telecand. This is where Chris gets Christmas. And you know, when that, when I wrote that down, I thought that reminds me of, um, Rhonda Empson. I watch her videos sometimes and <clears throat> there's a couple where I seen where when the Lord speaks to her in dreams that he's coming soon, that it's, um, or can, you know, just speaks to her. He uses like, it's Christmas time. And she'll say, <laughs> she'll say like, it'll be a Christmas setting and there'll be lights and, you know, presents or whatever. But I thought, oh, okay, that's, that's cool. That's really cool. So, um, I'm just going to go through, um, the title of this says God's love, our reason for hope. First John four, seven through 10. So, um, without a sense of purpose, there is no hope, but the Lord created each person for a reason to love God and be loved by him. He pursues us and does everything in his, his infinite power to reveal himself. The Lord wants each person to understand who he is and respond in worship and devotion. Uh, God's love is personal. Christianity stands out among world religions because God desires a personal relationship with every man, woman, and child. His care isn't limited to just one group. He loves every individual and desires regular, intimate conversation with each one. God's love is unconditional. It's who he is. 1 John 4, 8. Rather than simply something he does, nothing about your character or behavior can make him love you less or more. Nor are his care and concern limited because he is infinite and eternal. Eternal. God's love is available to everyone. It is inexhaustible. It, it is inexhaustible and reaches across every boundary or hindrance man can set up in an attempt to keep God at a distance. The Lord does not have favorites, but he does have intimates. <coughs> I'm sorry, you guys. 
These are his followers who spend time with him, talking and listening, walking in obedience, and desiring to know and love him with their whole heart. He wants all of us to choose this kind of relationship with him. The father didn't just say he loves you. He proved it by giving his son as a sacrifice for sin. Those who haven't trusted in the Savior can go through life oblivious to the blessing of his unconditional care. But what a waste it would be to live as though unloved when God's infinite, eternal love is offered to you. And then I wrote that telecand. This is where Chris gets Christmas stuff. Okay. Um, okay, so there was another scripture I wanted to share in here. I think it was, um, 1 Corinthians. It's about love. Um... If I, it talks about, okay, now eagerly desire the greater gifts, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clinging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears so when Jesus comes and you know we're made whole and everything and all this stuff that we know is going to disappear all this knowledge we've put in our heads and the the gifts that he's given us and <clears throat> it's going to be a new ball game guys it's going to be different for when I was a child I talked like a child I thought like a child I reasoned like a child when I became a man, I put the ways of the childhood behind me. And this is where it's interesting. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. When I read that, it was like when I look in the mirror... And then, you, not just your flesh, but your spirit, your spiritual person. We see a reflection in the mirror, and then we shall f see face to face. So when we look in the mirror and we, we see ourselves, we know we have the Holy Spirit, we see a reflection of that Holy Spirit when we look in the mirror. But pretty soon, the Holy Spirit inside of us is going to see face to face. We're going to see the Lord face to face. I thought that was interesting. And, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Okay. So I wanted to share that with you. And, uh, okay, so, sorry, guys. So I just pick, I, I've read through Isaiah a lot of times, but I wanted to see someone what the summary of the book of Isaiah just to get like this whole picture <coughs> because I remember I was told Isaiah and Timothy so um, 
the people that walked in darkness, uh, Isaiah 9, 1 through 7, uh, have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nation, not increased the joy. They, they joy, the joy before exceeding, before the, according to the joy in the harvest. Uh, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So it talks about Jesus being rejected. Um, <coughs> Isaiah prophesied during one of the worst times in the history of Israel. The Israelites had become so corrupt, God was going to remove them out of his sight. He raised up the Assyrian army to be an unmerciful, barbaric, ruthless, and unstoppable war machine. Their military tactics are still applauded today by those who understand the art of war. God called them from their distant land to come and destroy the Jews living in the north and take them away from their homeland. Isaiah was living in Judah in the city of Jerusalem during the time when King Isaiah had died. Isaiah prophesied during the reign, reign of King Isaiah, King Jotham, King Ahaz, and King Hezekiah, and probably King Manasseh of Judah. His prophetic ministry lasted... Okay, anyway. So, Isaiah 6 records the power of the full vision that Isaiah received of God the king on his throne and the king called Isaiah to prophesy to his people. This was Isaiah's call to ministry as a prophet of God. <coughs> so he's been called, he's ministering, he's prophesying. When the Lord uh, showed Isaiah who was really on the throne, Isaiah was terrified at the sight of God's holiness. Uh, and asked him, who will go with this message? And as Isaiah said, here I am, send me. Isaiah warned Jerusalem about her idolatry and her foreign alliances, but they scorned him. They did not listen to his warnings and quickly destroy their instruments of idolatry. He prophesied about the Assyrians who would destroy the northern kingdom. They were also good to come to Jerusalem, but God would deliver them. But he also told them that eventually the city will be destroyed and captured by the Babylonians, and that a Persian ruler named Cyrus would release the Jews from captivity. Isaiah prophesied more about the Messiah than any other book in the Old Testament. He also described in great detail the blessings of the future kingdom of the Messiah. His coming would be as a lion, bringing the day of God's wrath, but he would also first come as a savior who would die for the sins of the people. This was Isaiah's message, the humility and beauty of the savior. So he warned people about various problems within the kingdom. Anyway, he was talking, he prophesied about these last days too, and the Lord's role in it. Um, so you could just go through and just read that. And Timothy, he was being instructed. Okay, you guys, I just want to say the tribulation is about to start. That's what I was told those of you who are watching and then it faded out so just be watching um, be watching and waiting I seen uh, meteors flying across the sky and I was just in awe of these things you know um, the way that we read the Bible right now is not the way that I was perceiving like I can't explain it, but when we are going to be in our glorified bodies and like we think back to where all the, the word of the Lord, we're going to see it in a very spiritual, knowledgeable uh, way. It's not going to be like how we see it in our fleshly way. It's, 
it's going to be mind-blowing, you guys. <laughs> I'm not saying it's, it's translated wrong, but the way our capacity of our minds to uh, take something in is like at 10%. Um, because the way this angel was speaking it was just mind-blowing. And I, I mean, I, I can't even remember, but I remember the feelings. I, I think I was more bewildered, like, what? <laughs> okay, you guys, I love you. Let your lamp oils be filled. Let's be wise. Let's be watching. Praying for the body of Christ. Praying for Israel. I'm praying uh, for these world leaders right now and, and more workers for the field. In Jesus' name, amen.